Welcome to the Tone Jerks Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gower, and with me today we have... Kyle McIntyre. And we have a special guest uh, via the powers of the internet. We have Alex from Copper Sound Pedals. How are you guys today? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Doing well. Anyways, uh, let's, let's, let's do the, the what's news. We'll uh, jump into like, you know, a little more about Alex and his you know, pedals and things of that sort. But let's, uh, what's new in your world, Kyle? What's in, shaking? What's grooving? I, uh, I got that G7 a while ago, right? And I just got the, a, a hair up my ES to mod it. So mm-hmm. I modded that recently, did the quiet mod. And uh thing is pretty legit now. It's not a piece of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't howl when you just crank up the the mids or buzz or it's really quiet now. So I'm stoked on that. And then I got a Holy Grail pedal. Um the electro harmonics. Yeah. Uh HX uh and I uh, broke it. What? <laughs> Why so you were trying you were trying to mod this one too, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, I wasn't going to really mod it. I was just going to put it in a new enclosure. Uh-huh. Um and I was pulling it apart and I'm like, um oh, I'll be <laughs> I'll be gentle, don't worry. <laughs> and there's like a little toggle switch on there that switches between the spring, the It's like a bowl in a china shop. You're just like <laughs> oh, I'll be okay, I promise. Oh shit. Don't worry, mom won't break anything. Yeah, and I just just I mean the the switch just exploded. But I bought a new switch and Was it one of the like big old no, school ones? It's or? like the nano. Oh, so the EHX. It's a small. Yeah. Yeah, so it, everything's PCB mounted on there, and <laughs> I, I guess they had they put like all the hardware, you know, not you know, into the actual enclosure first, and then put the PCB down and then soldered it. Uh-huh. They didn't tell me this, you know. <laughs> like, hey, if you're gonna mod our pedals, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're gonna destroy our pedals, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's that. What were you gonna do with that? Or were you put, trying? Is this one kind your of a tre- secret? Your, your tre- no, no we, not, talked we talked about it. Right? About it. Your treadle thing. You're trying to put gonna... a reverb in a treadle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so stupid. But yeah, I'm gonna try it. You take your like crappy like uh, Dunlop wall that doesn't work. Yeah, and, and then, then you make take, it work. And then you maybe. Take, yeah, and then you take your <laughs> electro harmonics and shove them together. Yeah. And then bingo, profit, right? Yeah. <laughs> Watch the the upvotes flow in. You know all that Reddit karma. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a soul food. So, how's that? It's pretty cool. Are you going to do something with that or are you just going to Maybe. Just I was out? thinking about it, but you think that's a stupid idea. So, I mean, it's a, do you like it or what don't yeah, you like it about? It's cool. It's um turn up the gain, it's really like it starts getting fu- like fuzz, not fuzzy, but like loud. Busy. Like, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of Well, like a lot of background noise. I mean, with a lot of overdrive pedals, yes, but which I don't know anything. I got, <laughs> Maybe Alex knows, <laughs> but Alex, why does this pedal sound like shit? <laughs> well, it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> but yeah, it goes in like shit and it'll come out like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, I, I use that with the with that G seven. I'm like, dang, this uh, soul food's pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Can't polish turds, I guess. Can't. <laughs> uh, Alex, uh, what's new in your world this week? Anything? Uh... Uh, actually, <clears throat> I'm looking at a new, a, a new looper pedal, um, the EHX 720 okay. looper. Yeah. Um, have you guys seen that one? Yeah, it's, it's one of the bigger ones, right? Or is it? Yeah, it's like their, it's their standard, like, BB size. Gotcha, yeah. Um, you know, two foot, two foot switch, um, you know, but it's got half speed reverse, 12 minutes on there, 11 banks, <laughs> stereo, <laughs> um, it has like fade out options, count in and uh, stop button instead of having to double tap. Uh, um, does it have a cup holder so, on so there? It, Dang! What's that? A cup holder? <laughs> yeah, it has a hold your drink. <laughs> yeah, and a sunroof. <laughs> you could uh, um, you could play, but, but it's like the yeah. map. The map price is uh, one thirty nine. I was like, this is uh, bang for the buck. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I. I think we've talked shit about them like in an early episode about like looper pedals and stuff like that. They're actually a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I I bought one. No. I'll, I'll like 100% They're garbage. Go, I want one. Go back on my word. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, those fucking suck. They're terrible. And, I, and I'm like, you know what? I really want one of those. <laughs> There's so much. I'm like, man, these are fun. No wonder people buy these. <laughs> no wonder they mm-hmm. made them. That like, guy's having way too much fun on stage. Yeah. I want one too. I want to shit on his parade. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. Uh, did you just get that this week, or? Um, uh, I've been doing a little bit of the research for it. I think I'm gonna be getting one maybe next week. I'm just kind of going over like the options out there, what I need. I don't need like a mother station type thing, and I don't. And the single ditto is really cool, but if you got something that you like mm. and you don't have anywhere to save it, unless you're gonna run into like a DAW or something like that, it's kind of nice to have like eleven on the fly, and yeah. like you know I could even keep like some type of even like a piece of paper next to me on the board, like, okay, loop one is going to be, you know, the intro of this or whatever. So if I'm, if I'm writing something and I have to loop over it and I'm like, oh, I'm working on something else, you know, you can just go to bank two. Whereas on the ditto, it's nice on the fly, but it's like, you're kind of committed to just that one loop with layers. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to be able to be like, okay, you know what? When I come back, I'll have that. And now I can do this new thing on top of it as well. Yeah. Maybe a little bit better writing tool and stuff like that. That's good. Yeah, and just the fe the features for the price, all that it just it made sense. So I think I'm gonna try to pick one up, uh, maybe next week. Nice. That'll be. I guess that's what's new in my world next week. Yeah. <laughs> Check back. I'm I'm doing research. I'm doing research to make next week a hell of a week. <laughs> nice. What about you, Brian? Um, let's see. I got uh, been having practice for uh, just in case. Um, band I'm playing bass with. It's uh, Brian, our, our drummer for Playing Without a Pilot, his band. We have a show coming up on the 7th, so a week from today that we're recording. Friday the 7th at the Moreau. If you're in San Diego, you should come out. But I'm playing bass, and man, I'm using Kyle's <laughs> bass rig pretty much. I'm like, that thing is bitching. I'm using the compressor from the Serpents from Ground Control, and then I'm use, you added on the Earthquaker, the uh, what Westwood? Westwood. Yeah. And that sounds pretty damn good on bass, actually. It's <laughs> yeah. not like adds just enough grit. To where it's like, oh, you don't get lost. I'm like, man, this is sick. Playing bass is fun. <laughs> don't as tell much, anybody, though. As much as guitar is... It, but, uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, no, I hear. I, I got... This is a, a story. So, you got a quick second here. I'm We're a, here. Uh, yeah, I'm a... <laughs> you ready, Alex? <laughs> you all heard about Guitar Center, right? <laughs> ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, Guitar Center. Little mom and pop shop. <laughs> Boutique shop <laughs> yeah. down the corner. So Are they new? <laughs> yeah. They... I don't know. They fucking shit on me. Let me tell you this story. <laughs> okay, so I'm so ready. <laughs> so I saw online they had a Rockerverb Mark III, you know, the 100 watt version of the head, and this is the newest bells and whistles. It has the attenuator. It has the multi watt switch. We'll bring it from like 100, 75, 50, 30, yada yada. Mm -hmm. Better effects loop, all that jazz. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I saw it on you know Guitar Center. I'm like, oh, you know. I, I kind of don't need it, but it's a great deal. It's like for 1200 bucks for the head. And they normally go for like $2,200, $2,400 new. And I'm like, oh, shit, I should just get it. And then I'll sell my JCM 900 or whatever. So, I, you know, I, I bought it. And then they did like the financing and, I, you know, shit like that. And I'm like, oh, you know, pay it off in four years. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be great. It's going to be cool. <laughs> I waited a week, got it. I felt like they brought on like horseback. Like that's how long it took to get to my house. <laughs> Finally got it in, opened the thing up. It was a fucking rock over Mark One. It didn't even match the picture. <laughs> and I'm like, I, <laughs> I know most people were like, Mark well, 1, Mark 3, what's the difference? Just one, you know, one eye, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> but they're completely fucking different amps. There's different tubes. They're the, you know, one doesn't have an attenuator, the yada, yada, yada. There's so many more things. And I was just so pissed. I opened it up. I'm like, well, I'm packing this shit up and going straight to Guitar Center to drop it off. Luckily, they have a great return policy. No questions asked. They're just like, okay. Their shipping policy sucks. Yeah. So <laughs> but the, we'll take back anything. So like, <laughs> it didn't match the fucking photo, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend twelve hundred dollars plus shipping for a marker, a Mark One rocker verb because they go for like eight hundred, seven fifty all day. <laughs> I'd have to be an idiot to pay that much money for it. So they're like, yeah, fucking, here you go. And so like, <laughs> and it, it just like. They, they took it back, which was fine. They did not refund my shipping, because I'm like, whatever. whatever. You, you should have had me do it. They yeah. refunded mine last time. Oh, I should have just bitched, out, yeah. bitched them you out. You show up in your basketball shorts and like slippers, and they're like, <laughs> look at this poor bastard. You show up in your bathrobe, and they're like, sir, can you just get out of here? Can you please get the fuck out of our store? Anyway, so it's like... You've only got one shoe on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Where'd you find this head? <laughs> this guy really needs this $30 back. So I was just like, okay, and they they like have since like relisted the the head with the same stock photo. That like I can't even control over. I'm like I'm like losing like this, it. I was like like I'm like 
and people are like, why is he so mad? I'm like, no, I'm pissed off because I'm like, they use the same photo. I'm like, I don't know if that photo is matched up with the serial number. So they just like, oh, here's a serial number. It's like, oh, there's already a picture for it. We'll just use that JPEG, drop it in, and it's online right now. But I'm like, it's not the same fucking amp. Just take a picture with your phone. Take a picture with your phone and load it. I'm like, no. I like, and it's like, I, I was. <laughs> I was so pissed because <laughs> I was looking on Guitar Center. I'm like, oh shit, this one's in San Diego. Oh, damn it. They just took the one I returned to them and lo- put it back on their site. I'm like, oh, I was so pissed. There's just no pleasing you. They, have, they both have inputs. Come on. They both have orange jewel lights. You're too, <laughs> you're too high strung, sir. Anyways, that pissed me off. I was like, re- I was like, I still shop there though. I just bitch about <laughs> I was like thinking about like as I was leaving, I was all pissed. I was like, "Oh man, maybe I should buy some strings." No, I don't. <laughs> buy some sweet water or something. I was just like, "God damn it!" And nobody like like really gave a shit. The guy just like, "Okay," he just punched it in, and he probably just like brought put it right back on the sales floor, tagged it with something, and he's like, "All right, here you go." And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. That wasn't that interesting. I was just really pissed. I had to get it off my chest. <laughs> you feel better now? <laughs> Thanks for bearing with that one, Alex. All right, let's. <laughs> is that the? <laughs> I, 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 I've heard the stories and on both sides. I, I worked at a GC for a while, oh, yeah. so I've got the. I know the stories. I, prob- f- I feel the pain. You're probably like on your end. You're probably like, oh god, some dumbass <laughs> bringing his amp in, buyer's remorse. And I guess it worked out because I really don't need an amp. So maybe. Maybe that was the universe yeah, saying. Yeah, maybe it was gu- you know, the Guitar Center saying, like, hey, you know, y- you don't need an amp. Really? I mean, do, do any of us need amps? No. Okay. <laughs> so, guitar Center doesn't want you to buy stuff? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it, we're helping you out. Like, we'll, we'll, take the, we'll take the dive, but you don't need any more amps, kid. Mm-hmm. Thanks for shipping this to San Diego for yeah. us, though. <laughs> <laughs> it might do better over here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, that was my story. It was shitty. And it probably wasn't that interesting, but I had to get it off my chest. <laughs> let's let's uh, jump into Alex from Copper Sound Pedals. Uh, I don't want to make it like a full on, full fledged, you know, interview because if you guys want to hear like how he began and all that, you know, the nitty gritty type shit, I suggest you guys tune into the interview he did with the Tone Mob Blake. Shout out, and he did mm-hmm. uh, with the Guitar Knobs. Uh, I think Todd and uh, Blake do a much better job interviewing than I do, but I mean. So let's do a quick overview, Alex. Uh, what you know, Copper Sound. What it, maybe some cliff notes? Some like you know, uh, the 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 quick ones. What's uh, Copper Sound about? What you guys do? What do you have going on? Yeah, a little bit of the a little cliff notes. I guess is a good way to you know what was going on, what is going on right now, mm-hmm. type of thing. You know, um, yeah, totally. Shout out to those guys. They have really good shows, um, uh, good following, good format. Um, so you can definitely hear all the background stuff there. We're a small boutique shop out of, uh, Massachusetts where we're, uh, building everything by hand in a little, uh, in a garage with just a few dudes. Um, we definitely strive for the, you know, the everyday gigging musician, your, uh, meat and potatoes or bread and butter, whatever you like all of it for it, where we try to... Yeah, we. <laughs> if you want to put your bread and butter on your steak and potatoes, yeah, <laughs> do that too. Um, but um, yeah, we try to do um, you know very user friendly um, um, devices, if you will. Um, we are not the type to do like the one knob fuzz thing or the fifty knob delay thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, over the top type of stuff. You know, we try to shoot right down the middle. Our production, our main production line, you know, is generally, it's there's a spot for six controls that aren't the foot switch. So there's usually four knobs up top. There's a switch and a knob below, and that's usually the form factor we got. So kind of like, what do you absolutely need within these six spots? Yeah, um, in this form. And that's kind of what we're aiming for, you know. Um, a lot of people make one knob stuff and multi knob stuff, and that's great. And we're kind of going for that right in the middle. Um, yeah. Enough options, but can still be kind of streamlined, you know. Mm-hmm. So we do that. We also we also try to do um, in our utility pedals. We try to be somewhat unique with that. Where I started doing like ABYs and tap tempos and all those cool things. Um, to start out and it's a great thing for people building and then I started um, getting the idea for other stuff like um, the pedal board flashlight that we make 
mm-hmm. I thought was kind of cool because nobody really had that on the market. It's like everybody's got the parts for it, but nobody was doing it. That's cool. And no, I really like that thing. <laughs> start, yeah, you, you know, so we were doing that, and then around then we were also doing um, this kill switch. We do uh, the telegraph stutter. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that like one's definitely... Handheld what was that? I had a, a question about your uh, telegraph stutter, actually. Yeah, go on. Um, so when I look at it, I picture it like on, like a like a Gretsch, like a a huge bodied guitar, like a like it would be cool to put uh, use that as like a momentary switch, you know, right next to your trim bar or whatever. Just have that telegraph. I don't know. If, if Is you, there a question there? No. <laughs> just, was, no, no, my no, question people, was no. have you ever seen it that way i guess probably not i don't i don't know if I've, it was like a suggestion not a <laughs> <laughs> can you see it now <laughs> so i got a question for you this is cool period <laughs> <laughs> no but, it. no you're daring you, <laughs> you got me no uh we can be sassy up here i should have uh, said the North i should have said uh Question: Can we talk about your? And that was my that was my question. You know, uh, no, that's actually roast his real, ass if he does something dumb. <laughs> yeah, do it. That's actually a uh, no. That's actually a a good question, and I think people have asked about that before. Like, instead, you're saying like instead of having like you know change the rhythm toggle thing on a Les Paul mm-hmm. or having a kill switch on like your volume pot or whatever. Yeah, some people put um, momentary like an arcade button on their pickguard. Yeah, guard. yeah, that push button. Um, actually, Tone Field Effects makes a little kill switch that's the push button, and it has uh, creatures from uh, Pac Man on it, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, being di- being different, I like that. But yeah, seeing the actual Morse code straight key like next to your vibrato arm is what you're saying. Yeah, I have heard people talk about they're like, I want to just glue this right on my guitar. <laughs> yeah, you know? maybe and not. My, and my first instinct is like, go ahead, crazy. I'll see you later. <laughs> and um, you're avoiding your warranty. <laughs> <laughs> you break it. No, no. You, you break it. You bought it. Okay. You break your butt. <laughs> if I, 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 people have asked it. So yeah, you're definitely in that in that vein that people have. I would say. The right guitar could pull it off because something Gretsch, right? It's got like that old school <laughs> yeah. like a car. It's got an old school cool. It's it like a has a big body. Yeah, it's got a good amount of like chrome hardware. Yeah, it could relate to this. It's got like an, an old school thing, whereas the you know the Morse code is it's been around for a long time. So you're not putting it on like a new futuristic guitar that's like a small shredder body, like yeah. even like an Ibanez or something. But like something like, like an a bossy old... or something like that. <laughs> yes, you know what though? Gretsches are like. Every Gretsch I can think of is like an arch top, has like a, a bow on the top. Yeah. Whereas you might you might be better off with something more like straightforward flat, like a telly where it's got some surface. But again, you'd want a bigger body thing. Even like, like a 335 would be kind of cool. But again, it's got like that arch to it. Whereas I feel, I feel like if you were going to do this surgery, um, <laughs> you would want some type of flat surface. Yeah, you'd probably a telly with next year uh, Bigsby. You know, yeah, like if you rock that style, like you know, Jack White does a Bigsby on his telly, and I always think of that, like in his Ice Blue Metallic one, like that's got some hardware already going on. You might as well add a Morse code. That'd be cool. Yeah. Toggle to it, you know. It, it, if anything, it would be it fucking would, dope, though. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ask stupid <laughs> questions, even if you're just not gonna ask one. <laughs> Man, I'm I can be sassy. Um, Do it, like we're, we're like you know, don't hold back. You've heard our podcast. That is, we that, talk- is that is. That is the podcast. You know, as soon as I was talking to you guys about that, I messaged my buddy um, Ryan McKay. He builds pedals uh, at Yellow Cake. Yeah, no. That, that, and I was like, dude, cool, dude, you should listen to this podcast. And he was like, uh, you know, he was asking, like, why? What's up? Is it cool or whatever? I was like, they're sassy and they got some attitude. It's right up our it's right up our alley. We always um, we bunk with him for NAM shows and stuff like that. So and he's got some he's got some feist to him. And oh, it's, uh, it's man, a good we, time. We legit were at your booth. Right. Was Ryan there? Ryan is a more noticeable guy than any of us because he's got the no hair. He sometimes <laughs> got glasses on. He looks like he looks like if uh, Eminem had like a pale color, <laughs> a paler color, <laughs> like a really pale color. You know, he's like a really light crayon that's been used. Okay. Uh, shit. Uh, let's let's bring it back. So you have your telegraph stutter. Yeah. Yeah. So so we were doing that in the flashlight, and we were like. It's kind of, we wanted to have a little bit, if we're going to do utility, we wanted to do it a little different than um, what might be out there for options. Um, and then we did, you know, we did Labyrinth, which is a signal router for effects loops of guitar pedals. 
Um, you know, so we're trying to be unique in that realm. And we also do, we do a third series. We have our production, our utility, and we also do what we call the pickguard series. It kind of, it looks like Fender guitars, um, like in a guitar pedal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you've ever seen them, one of them looks like a Strat, a cutout called the Strategy, which is a preamp pedal. And we do one that looks like a Telecaster called the Broadway that looks like it was cut out of like where the control panel is. Yeah, those are pretty. On, the, the, um, those are pretty eye catching too. Yeah, you had to like. You're like, do, what? <laughs> do What's a that? D- double take on that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, tr- we're trying to stand out because there's a lot of there's a lot of great companies out there. There's a lot of up and coming, you know, starting companies and trying to just stand out from the pack. Definitely, well, you're definitely doing it. <laughs> and then you have uh, yeah, it's, it's the Polaris, right? The Chorus Vibrato. That was a couple a year yeah. or so ago. Or? Yeah, we did that in uh, June of last year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a little over a year. That's been pretty. It's been going pretty well for us. It's it's a favorite in the shop. Um, I've always liked chorus. If you listen to my podcast, I always mention the small clone yeah, from yeah. EHX, and I I always liked that pedal. We had one here in the shop, so we were like, let's go after this, like a nice analog chorus, but let's elaborate on it. So you know, let's put features like volume having a tone knob for bassy versus trebly, you know, really thin uh, chorus sounds, like, you know, kind of uh, the strat in the background where it's like you're not, it's not fully present, but you can hear it's being there yeah, type no, of thing. That, and that, and v- very... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty perfect for, you can even use it for bass because like a uh, chorus that has like a bass control, I'm like, oh, it won't, you won't lose that low end type shit. And I always think... Yeah, uh, for, sh- for sure. Because like with some of them, I, you could... Just like if you th- click on your bass track, you're like, oh, I'm not a bass anymore. I lost all of those frequencies. So having been able to dial that in, and then you're able to dial in more of a vibrato too. And I think, yeah, there's a switch on there for um, vibrato mode. And yeah, I mean, those are always cool effects to have a vibrato because it's like, oh, I don't always want to go full on. Because vibrato to me is like, you know, it's like, whoa, we're fucking here with a vibrato. It's like <laughs> so to have that kind of. It's easy to overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. To have it in your back pocket is really cool. But yeah, it's more of like I guess you'd say it's a chorus pedal that has vibrato on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, we just wanted to have some versatility, more than like one knob, and not a hundred knob rack unit. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, kind of right in the middle because there's option paralysis with like, you know, the like Strymons or like you know DD500 or something like that. You get like, oh my god, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, you, you you can get a little overwhelmed. I mean, sometimes I've been saying it a lot and kind of messing with it, like the idea of often when you have more options, there's less result in the end. So, you know, you have so much you, you could do, but the song doesn't progress because you have so many things that, like so many options that you get overwhelmed and those options don't end up equaling creativity always. Mm-hmm. You can get bogged down by them. Yeah, definitely. Did, you know, but so that's, that's just my take. Did you uh, build the Labyrinth to work with the uh, Daedalus? To, to to kind of work hand in hand with, or is that just kind of like a something that you were missing, or I don't, I don't know. I'm just no, no the, yeah. Actually, that's I think that's where it started. You're you're absolutely right. Um, after we did Daedalus, when we had how we had the effects loop on it, um, one of the guys in the shop was saying like it's cool, but if you put a pedal in the loop of Daedalus, you yeah. now lose that pedal. So we were like, hmm, that's absolutely right, and we were all like, that doesn't exist. So why don't we? Why don't we do something about that? So um, we collectively came up with the idea. Then we collectively designed the circuit around it to, you know, dump either a pedal into the effects loop of Daedalus or anything like a timeline or a JHS pedal or something. And then with a click of one button, you could switch it back to being in the front of the amp. So, you know, we, we did the circuit design, we did the artwork, and then we put the effects loop for it on there. We gave it a courtesy power outlet because nobody wants to lose a power, yeah. like a, a spot on their power supply for an LED status. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now so that, that allowed you to take a pedal and put it in either the front of the amp or inside of the, like the effects loop of your uh, delay. That's pretty either. cool. But yeah, it definitely, it correlated from, it, it came from uh, Daedalus. And if you actually look, the artwork for Labyrinth has the uh, Greek symbol, uh, the Psi symbol uh-huh. inside the Labyrinth. 
And if you look at Daedalus inside the wingspan, it actually has the psi symbol as well. So they're kind of like, you know, related. Oh, I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look at that as, yeah. as again. Take, take a second look. Yeah. That, that Daedalus <laughs> is pretty cool, though, where it allows you to use the expression with the, those repeats. Right? You, you put whatever yeah. pedal you want in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you have the reverb set wherever you want, and that's the toe down. Yeah. So, like, you know, typically you'd set reverb probably all the way up and then use the the treadle or treadle, wherever you're from, and um, <laughs> roll Wait, it how back. do you Which say is, it? I guess, I guess what, what's the correct way? You, you, you're probably better um, than me. I, I would say we have a British friend that works in the shop, so whatever he says, I know that we as an Ameri- as Americans would say the opposite. Yeah, perfect. So he yeah. says, um, he says, uh treadle so i'm like that's probably <laughs> right and we're just butchering it <laughs> so we have these so, we have these aluminium <laughs> cases here you're like oh so it's aluminum <laughs> yeah exactly so sometimes if i don't if i'm not fully aware on the pronunciation of something i'll look over at my shoulder and be like hey oliver how do you say this word and then he'll say it and i go okay i know i say garage instead of garage yeah <laughs> garage <laughs> you know yeah so something like that but yeah that that um the well, funny thing with um like the treadle with the whole expression um you know being able to use the treadle for the reverb amount yeah that was actually not planned so we planned the effects loop so that you could put a pedal into the effects loop and it would work in the decay mm-hmm. but we did not actually plan the expression thing it was one of those things where it, I, I forget because this is the first pedal that we ever did um and. We, I have an Ernie Ball Volume Pedal Jr., and you can use that as an expression if you use, like, a TRS cable. Yeah, yeah. So I think you, you, you know, you put, like, the, I think it's the tip is in the in, and then, like, the ring is in the out. Excuse me. And then um, it collectively go to, like, the uh, TRS cable. And we were, like, we put that in there just to see, like, what it was doing. I forget why or if it was for this reason. And then we realized it would control, because essentially in that loop or the effects loop, if you roll the treadle back on like a volume pedal or something, you're sending stuff to ground, and we're like, okay, well, there goes your reverb sound because everything's getting killed, but the dry is staying in there. Mm-hmm. And it ended up working out that whatever toe down is, that is uh, where the reverb uh, knob is set to max. That's cool. Nice. So that was just, I don't know, a lucky, I guess that was happy or lucky coincidence or, you know. Yeah. So oh, I guess that kind of, I mean, I guess besides um, the fox catcher, um, that kind of brings up to to date, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Polaris is the most current production line pedal that we have. The last thing that we did, uh, we released at Winter Nam uh, Broadway, the uh, Germanium Treble Booster, and then we released that in March. So March was our last release for a pedal, but it's been a year since we've done a production line pedal. We try to. Like, I try to always space out, and I think all of us kind of do as well. Like, I'm kind of, I don't know the right way to say it, but, like, when I see a company that's bigger do a pedal every, like, four months, I'm kind of like, really? Like, give the other one a little time. Or, yeah, like, well, you're saturated. Like, were, were you ready to just keep doing it over and over? Like, maybe yeah. maybe there's a reason behind that, you know. It's They're just saturating keep... the market for even themselves. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> which electric harmonics if... pedal do I want? <laughs> Right, you know, it's like, oh, they just came out with one Friday, and now they're going to have one next week, and, you know, so I, 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 I like to space them out a little bit more, where, like, we really fine-tune everything to the absolute that we can, um, you know, but, but honestly, the bigger guys are able to do that if they get more people, whereas we're like, you know, if we get bogged down with orders and production and stuff like that, it takes yeah. a little bit of time being smaller, which is fine, you know, if the bigger guys can do it, that's cool. Yeah, um, and it also gives you maybe time it's to... A, maybe it's a beat to market. Mm-hmm. It you gives know, it gives uh, each pedal but, its own time, you know. It's, yeah, we we you know we try to let it let it have its uh, guitar solo, if you will, or <laughs> let it have its time in the limelight. And um, generally, one to two a year will do. At yeah. most, we'll do two a year. Generally, you know, um, I was I always mention relentlessly about Caroline Guitar Company how they do like one guitar pedal a year or even longer. But they don't really have to because they come up with something like the kilobyte, and now they've make they're making ten thousand of them because it's so good they don't have to come out with another generic overdrive. <laughs> yeah, I mean you it's kind of so like you know. Sometimes I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, talking over you. Sorry. I, sometimes I think you make more of a wave by like 
maybe being more like if you recluse a little bit like it makes more of a wave that people are like oh shit what are they coming out with next it builds up the hype and excitement too because you're like it allows people to marinate a little bit more but if you keep just bogging people down with more and more shit they're like whoa take it easy dude save some pedals for the rest of us (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah, right yeah you come out with something and they see it and they're talking about it for a while and um then it's kind of like you don't see too much and then all of a sudden like a new thing's here and everybody's talking about the new thing it's like did we already forget the thing they just did like 12 weeks ago yeah (laughs) you know like almost like a constant battle to to the surface to be relevant Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's like you get these ideas and you want to get them out and that's that's understandable too definitely yeah you know i heard a recent episode that you did with the tone control um and you had mentioned on there that you are going to be in premier guitar this in september yeah right? so, so tomorrow i don't know exactly when but you, the yeah, october, oh yeah october the october issue the yeah. october I- issue comes out in september because magazines were like hey we're going to do it a month early because we're, we're still stuck in the, <laughs> the 1800s or whatever <laughs> we got to get all this paper out <laughs> yeah we got to yeah, push paper yeah. <laughs> so the, the october issue of premier guitar is uh you know it's always been known as their pedal issue so yeah we have an ad coming out that's going to tease um our next pedal so in in the ad for premier guitar that comes out probably about a week or so mm-hmm. you know um that will have an ad that hints towards our next pedal it has the name of it it has the announcement date on it it's um and that's a the only other thing i said with um yeah the tone control don't, was that it is a dynamic pedal you don't want to give away the whole farm here but on the tone jerks mm-hmm. but cool uh i guess we can uh move along but is there anything else you wanted to mention before we go to some topics i think what i wanted to do is uh, tackle a few topics with you alex but is there anything you want to mention before we move on it's my shitty segue i hope you love it <laughs> <laughs> hey do you want to say something before we talk about other stuff it's like uh, I'm, I'm gonna hurry you along here <laughs> <laughs> the red light means get off the stage <laughs> i mean I, I i my cane uh, doesn't reach from san diego all the way out there so you know <laughs> <laughs> right um yeah no i think we'll we'll leave it at that we'll leave a little mystery there like i said you can get it in the premier guitar issue you know you can you can you can find the teasers on social media as well. We do a little bit of that as well. Definitely, um, I know, think ramping yeah. ra- ramping up towards it. Nice. Let's uh, get into some topics. These are actually uh, both from you. Do you want to introduce them, or do you want me to? Yeah, I'll um, I'll ask. Yeah, I'll introduce the topic, and then I'd like to see what you guys have to say on on the on the topic. Okay, we can answer them first, and then uh, you give your hot take How about that. Yeah, I can I can always chime in if like if you guys have a you know like on the subject of this because it's kind of it's i guess it's it's not um it's not too involved but essentially the question is when it comes to um like a small to medium-sized band not like the size of the band members and stuff but like their popularity so you got your small local medium maybe traveled nationwide whatever it is is it worth it and how much should they bring to the gig when it comes to lighting and other non-musical based stuff, you know, banners, all that type of, all that type of, um, uh, what have you. Accessories. That isn't the actual yeah. gear. Accessories, that type of, you know, um, all the other to shit. It, you know, bes- <laughs> the accoutrements, yeah. if you will, you know, because the goal there, you know, and, and I was thinking in my head, they want to stand out, but is it worth losing a lot of space in a van? Can they stand out? It, obviously, the music is going to be the ultimate defining thing, but can that help? Is it going to hinder? Is it worth it? What are the what are the pros and cons? And I was just curious because you guys do talk about like live uh, mm-hmm. studio and like the benefits of this versus that and how it really is. And I thought it'd be good to get your take on how much gear should a small to medium band bring to a gig for like lighting and all that stuff. Um, I really think I'm going to start first. Sorry, Kyle. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> we do tour and it's all completely DIY for us. Like we have no booking agent, we have no manager, we have no label. We put all our music out there ourselves. We book tours ourselves. And we just get into a van, three, four dudes, whatever the tour may be, and we just sleep in that fucking thing. We stink up that fucking thing, and we go to the next city and we're driving ourselves. And to me, the less shit you bring and have to worry about, the better. Like bare minimum to me i'm like pack small pack light 
pack smart. And if you are bringing lights, you know, that's okay. Those, you know, are fragile and they're going to take up a, you know, a, you know, a decent amount of space depending on the size. Uh, scrims like the, you know, poster, you know, and the banners and shit like that. Those are going to take up some space because you don't want to break them. You need to be delicate with them. And then, I don't know, fog machines, smoke machines, shit like that. I'm like, ah, oh, no, dude. like to me, to me, and it, like this is like completely biased because I play punk rock. We listen to punk rock. We're in a punk band and we like going to punk shows. So it's like none of that really to me ever adds to a show. It always just takes away from it. Yeah. Uh, so one question I would add or or ask in there is the genre playing a big or small part in this. You know what I mean? If you're going for a straight, you know, a gymnasium rock show like a punk rock thing versus more of like uh, an ambient uh, style genre or something along the lines of like a like a bony bear or something like that, is it would that alter it then? Yeah, I I guess it would probably be a little different because we've toured once and we um ran into apart from her tour do you know name drop you can pick it up in a second you know sarah longfield that um instrumental guitarist uh she's done a lot of stuff with uh uh i think like jared dines and uh rob scala and stuff like that she's a big youtube thing um, oh yeah, I've seen a. I saw a video. Uh, I do follow Rob Scallon. He did a video for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we we like we're a pop punk band. So think of like you know Green Day, Newfound Glory, Sum Forty One type shit like that. You know, mm-hmm. and we played a show with her band, which was like instrumental prog, like two eight string guitar players and a drummer, and we played in Seattle. They're they're from they at the time. I think they were. I, I can't remember where they were from. I think they were from Wisconsin or something like that. Their tour in our, in our, like we, we basically like locals opened up for both of us and we met in Seattle. So, um, it was just like, it happened to be like, you know, just a Wednesday show, whatever. There's locals there. Who cares? Um, so for us, our stage was just like, I'm like, get the shit out of here. I'm just going to put my combo amp here and put the bass amp and the drums and boom, done. And then her stage was like, Oh, like lamps. And they kind of, their whole aesthetic was more of like the, I think kind of make it more like you said, kind of like the look of the stage. Cause like, you know, they're um, playing music and they're not doing a whole bunch of movement, but they're fucking killing it on guitar. So they sound great, but they wanted to have it more, I guess, bigger in far as far as like the way it looked. So they had like lights going out and they brought their own lights and show stuff like that. And so it, mm-hmm. you're right. It really added to their show, but like, I think it's like whatever, type of like music like fits like for punk no just get everything off the stage and sound fucking good i don't care yeah yeah no i i I definitely think that is true like the genre could affect your decision i guess also in my head i'm thinking you know let's say you got like let's say it is like you know not quite punk but more of like you know a a rock and like a rock band or maybe a little bit more of like folk rock or something like that Mm -hmm. let's say you got a you got a bill you got four bands on there are you more likely to remember like that third band that had this really cool light thing where the drum kit lit up and they manually were doing a couple small things to make you remember the band that you don't already know, you know, yeah. is that, is that helping, uh, you know, okay, yeah. it, it could, yeah, it I, could, you know, is it's like, it's like, how was the show? Uh, I knew only the headliner, but there was this band that had this really cool, like light show type thing. It, you, again, you got to like the music. The band's got to be good. But that could be the thing that breaks somebody over the edge to remember. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, that's definitely a good point. And I think from my perspective, we're not at a point where that really matters. Or, like, that's not really into consideration for us. Us is just getting home from the tour (laughs) and just without killing each other. You know, it's like, okay, pack up the van with as much gear as you need, really. Like, if you could bring just one guitar, that'd be best. But... you. Probably need two, just in case the one breaks or a string or something like that. Yeah, lights lights are non-essential, no, I, especially if you're trying to travel light and efficient. I what think. Do you, what What do you? What, I, what's your take on it, Kyle? I think it's really easy to look like a tryhard up there. Like you're just trying really hard to look cool, you know. And if you've not like 
practice. You've not, you don't sound good for me. I hear right through it. And I'm like, oh, this guy has relied on buying all this stuff from Guitar Center. All of his lights. Hi, American DJ. behind the, uh, yeah. the core. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I think, and you still got to play the audience. So you can't just rely on that, you know. So and mm-hmm. I can, it can definitely burden a show. That's what I, I don't know. Yeah, and setting up a show. <laughs> fucking already, Christ, dude. If you're trying to troubleshoot your pedal board and you're... Oh, wait, and your lights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah, like, oh man, that would just kill it. Because you're like, oh dude, when do you have to set up your own gear? And then you have to set up your lights and sometimes like people bring video screens. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> dude, there's like... You, like, we're all about... like We should be able to set up our band in 10 minutes. Yeah. Less it, than 10 minutes. You got minutes. like 15 GoPros <laughs> yeah. to record. Yeah. <laughs> It what well, you know, Kyle made an interesting point with like the whole like you know I'm not buying it with the decor if like this guy hasn't practiced clearly. So what it makes me think in my head too, I kind of uh, sum it up uh, philosophically or however you want to. If the band were good, the light show can add to it. If the yeah. band's not so good, now the light show makes me kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. upset. <and laughs> <Yeah. happy. laughs> that's, you know, so that's... that could be the thing that takes you over or under. It's like okay. <laughs> Uh, you went to Ikea and didn't practice, there you, <laughs> you know, something like, like versus like these guys were good and they brought the light game. There you go. Yeah. I've had it where like you're in a small club and like they've had these crazy LED lights and you're blinded and you're like, ah, I'm, I'm going to go outside or I'm going to start tripping. I'm going to start having like a seizure on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, I think a, a good light show or like accessories show, like smoke or whatever the hell you're going to do. Um, you know, shoot a flying pig up in the air. I don't care. I mean, that will add more to a show than I think. Like some sometimes uh, bands put a little too much emphasis on gear. That's one thing I right. like. I wanted to it, mention. Like, wait, this is a gear podcast. Gear, gear doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> honestly, you know what's really fucking cool? A fucking full stack. <laughs> you want <know> cooler? <laughs> two full stacks and like two eight tens. <laughs> But is that really <laughs> worth it when you're playing for 30 people? <laughs> yeah, that's a, I, I, yeah, that, I made that, a note off for this one. Play to your audience. <laughs> yeah, but like we, we've seen some bands. I'm like, dude, it's a Tuesday night at a bar, and you're bringing two full stacks. What are you doing? I'm like, I understand it's really the, cool. The even strip club doesn't even bring their best stuff on Tuesday. <laughs> 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 you save that shit for Friday. But, oh, man. That's like, to me, I'm like, that's where like I think lights and smoke and stuff like that will add more than gear because sometimes like bands people like I mean, we have a, a buddy who like a couple buddies who just focus too much on gear like oh yeah well i have all this gear and i have all this shit you know in my house and in my garage like i should be playing better shows i'm like dude you haven't played a show in three years if you like, don't use you, it you lose it you don't have a band <laughs> even and you're talking about shit about like people who play like like uh, a buddy has like 20 telecasters and he's just like i'm like i'm like dude we, we understand you get you like telecasters he's like oh man i have this you know american one i have this japanese one man my band should be signed we should be on the road I'm like do you have a band he's like no i mean i'm gonna get one though <laughs> and then he sees bands who play you they're out there with like a blues junior and they're just like rocking a stage he's like oh man that blues junior thing's fucking tiny dude i'm like nobody cares about your gear like that's where like yeah, but the, the guy's there the guy is there. <laughs> this, the, Who cares if the the Blues Junior is tiny? He's there. The, the you know, crowd, I would. That, that's where the crowd does not give a fuck. <laughs> is gear right? As much as a all of, of us, pe- yeah. Especially if you're a couple beers in, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> I, I would I, every time I would take um, a guy with a smaller setup that's there, yeah, writing good stuff and actively, um, you know, contributing to the gig and the affair versus the guy that's got 15 guitars, eight Klon centaurs, and he doesn't even try. It's like, they should come to me. Like, when a band's like, dude, we're so good. Why aren't people coming to us? Like, yeah, you are so good. you got to get out there, though. It's not just like, dude, these five songs are bitching. When are people going to find us? It's like, n- no. It's like, I'd rather the B-minus band that tries their ass off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, Like, I don't want the A-plus guy with 15 tellies under the couch. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, st- I'm, like, stacking them up for one. <laughs> like... Yeah, that, that's it's, it's going to help for the zombie apocalypse, and that's it. You're not playing shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're, that's that's I think is the biggest one. Is like, like we're talking about. I know we're talking about lighting and accessories, but I'm like, we're I love <laughs> I love gear and stuff like that. But that's one thing. I'm like, we played a show and I, I brought a half stack. I'm like, dude, this looks more bitching than it sounds. 
Whereas like it looks way cooler, but you can get by so many gigs because the thing is nobody gives a fuck. If you show up with like a one by twelve, like the crowd is like they care about like how you sound, and really, I mean, like if we, like if you if you brought lights, they would give more of a shit about that than your gear. They would not even care about your gear. They'd be like, well, the, well, here's one thing to consider: What's the lights amp? are similar to like the lyrics so if a person's a musician right they can relate to like a a scale or understand the gear whereas if a person's not a musician they can still determine if they like or don't like the song but they can relate to lyrics and stuff so you're at like a gig it's like you know you're there with somebody and they're like those lights are really cool how it was in time with it and blah 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 but they're not like does it look like he's playing 11s yeah you know like (laughs) if they're not into the if they're not into the gear they're not, you know, it's, it's, they're relating to the thing. So they could relate to the visual of the show, whereas they're not nerding out about the Sonic thing. Mm-hmm. And going back to what you guys are saying, like, sometimes bring less and have a, have a stronger show. It's like, sometimes you're not even going to notice those things. Like that guy that's got that really fancy amp at the show that's barely getting gigs. How many guys went out to a show with his girlfriend? They've had three or four beers and the girlfriend says to the boyfriend, do you think he has El Nico blues in that? <laughs> or is it like, what? is he going to rock the cream backs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, know, cause he, maybe live, it doesn't matter. Just get there and rock out. Definitely. <laughs> I think that's you, a good point. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 I think you had that one off right there. I think the moral of the story is get all the lights you can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and barely practice. Just fucking <laughs> get a curtain, play behind a curtain, put the lights in front. <laughs> the gorillas, they got a good idea going on there. <laughs> all right. Sure. Uh, you had another one for us, Alex. Yeah. Why don't you guys want to deliver it and I'll give my, uh, my opening on it? All right. So uh, this was another topic that you brought to us. And it was... Uh, you can only have one guitar uh, for live and recording, but it has to be an artist model that already exists. What would you choose? Yes. I think I was listening to you guys' podcast when I came up with this. Got it. Because you guys, I forget so, which so, episode. You guys, you guys had a few good ones. Maybe it was actually during the Kyle Files rant. So this is our something. idea. This is our topic. Yeah, yeah. Cool, you, thank yeah, you. You, you, you. brought, you brought yeah. it up because we inspired it. So basically, it's ours. Yeah. It's, yeah, you now, you now, like, I, I've signed it over to you. Actually, quick side note, mm-hmm. I believe it was, uh, I want to say Summer Nam 2017, or no, probably a Winter Nam, like a bigger show where they have, like, the upstairs open. Yeah. It, the G- Gibson had a room, and I somebody took a picture in the group. I'll, I might have to check it out. So this could just, you know, take the story for what it is. But there was a sign somewhere that said, uh, more or less to the terms of, by entering this room... You forge over all ideas that were spoken in this room. <laughs> kind of like if you if you went in there and you had a cool idea for an SG, you don't own shit now. We got it because that microphone and the plant did our work. So I just, it just made me think of that <laughs> well, <laughs> because I thought of it while listening to you. It's your question. Yeah, it was like with Gibson, we kind of always avoid going up there because they always <laughs> want to scan your badge and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't want your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it's about like, your Joan Bonamassa bullshit. Like, let's let's keep that off. Yeah, we get it. You really like that guy. Yeah, it <laughs> he's is. a cool like dude. Him. You like okay. Jobo, okay? We all yeah, like I'm, him. I'm, lo- I'm looking for 335s, not email list subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to see all the, okay. <laughs> the flying V bases you're not making. <laughs> <laughs> but they're backwards and they're nine string. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, so <laughs> the question... Uh, you got to have uh, an artist model for live and recording. So I went between two. I don't know if it's tacky to say it wasn't this one and that one. I'll, I'll, my actual answer for what artist model it would being a Telly guy and being a Jimmy Eat World fan, I have to go with the JA90. Nice. Uh, uh, Jim Adkins, uh, semi hollow Telly matching headstock, the 2P90s, set up kind of like um, Telly Deluxe style, you know, the, the four um, knobs. Yeah, yeah, kinda yeah. Kind of like a Les Paul. Uh, just being a huge fan of his, you know, he's got like a a black model, a red one, a natural, I think, in a wood, mm-hmm. and a few of them you can get. A couple of them you can't. A couple of them are just his. I remember seeing him on tour when he did. Uh, they toured recently around here, but yeah, I think the Jim Adkins JA ninety is my is my choice for this. It was either that or the Johnny Marr Jaguar. Yeah, those are both tight. Shit. All right. Yeah, but but I, I, I'm I'm gonna go with the JA ninety. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> And survey says no. <laughs> um, I need no, a bell. Uh, ding, ding. 
Oh, this is tone control. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get a gong. Yeah. Boom. Boom. I think both of those would be great because it's like, okay, you have like the both like it's a dual P90 setup, right? And that's like, is it kind of yeah. just set up like a Les Paul, right? Where it's like, okay, you have the bridge, you have the neck, and the middle, you have both. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure with like a double volume, double tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, upper horn has the uh, switch, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the, you know, like Tele Deluxes and stuff. But he did a semi-hollow, some cool finishes. Matching headstock, which is, that one actually pulls off. Not all Tellys pull off the matching headstock like a Jazz Master or a Starcaster. Yeah. Man, that, yeah, no, that's pretty cool. That's super, that'd be super versatile. Um, yeah. Yeah, shit. Okay. Well, Kyle, how about you? Yeah, um, I went I went <laughs> oh, he, easy. He, he said the bar here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, I went easy, and I... Uh, Picked uh, Music Man, St. Vincent, mm. the double humbucker. Mm. The double humbucker? Yeah, with the nice. tr- with the trim bar. Nice. So that'd be kind of cool. the Pelham Blue? Pelham Blue? Color? Yeah, the, it's like the parchment pit guard, and it's the like surf yeah. kind of blue look. Yeah, it's like a, usually like a... Uh, like a, that softer metallic bluish. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is that it, right. I think that's but that's n- one of the new not, ones they have. Not about. too yeah. dark. The, the one I was looking at was uh like a light blue and a and a t- uh, the parchment pit guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's cool in, the, yeah the new one they came out this year. Yeah, because normal or it first came out with the three mini humpuckers. Yeah, yeah. I remember I held it at a uh, Winter Nam. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. And then some guy was staring at me. I'm like, oh. all, all, all the suits were like surrounding us. Hey, what, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We mean, only made one of these. Put them back. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like billy clubs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I, was, I, I saw an ad for uh, was it Evertune? Mm-hmm. Jim Root, Telly? Yeah. With an Evertune in it? Yeah. That'd be my next one. <laughs> That's your second? <laughs> yeah. That'd be really cool. If we yeah. could pick two. Let's everybody do the runner up. Let's all do the runner-ups. Oh, shit. Only we can call I... them number twos. It's okay. <laughs> <Our> number two. <laughs> That's a number two. <laughs> um, all right. Two. Shit. Okay, I didn't pick a number two, but I got one that's going to be... <laughs> it, it's significantly shittier. Mine than was my, right off the fly, than, so... Than my, than my first one. So uh, my number... My first one that I would choose for an artist model would be a uh, Sue, the Sir uh, Pete Thorne. <laughs> I think it's a, the... His is like a mix of like a Strat and like a Les Paul kind of deal it has like a strat body but it has like mahogany type deal it has like dual humbucker but it has push pull pots and it has like a switch that you can go between like i think it's like a five-way switch that you can go between the humbuckers and like or maybe it's a three-way but with the push pull you can go like inner coil outer coil stuff like that it's really versatile mm-hmm. with the tone and it has a um vibrato uh arm so you can do like the woo, 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 like if you really want to dude get real divey yeah and the thing is, maybe it's partially because like he's such a good player that I would think I'm like, yeah, you know <laughs> just what? Like him. <laughs> I can be good like him. <laughs> Psych, you suck. <laughs> but he 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 did a video for Polaris that was catchy as hell. <laughs> yeah, he did. It fucking blew my blew my mind. <laughs> he he's like, he's awesome. He's just. I think I'm on the Pete Thorne train now. Yeah. I watched some of his videos. I'm like, wow, it's like shit. That sounds great. <laughs> he really gets into it. You know. Like his, he, he does it. You know what's cool too? He like writes a whole song around that pedal. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm like. It's Jesus really cool. Christ, this dude! I'm like, I like. It's taken me like you know uh, four weeks to like you know track a song that I wrote you know two years ago <laughs> <laughs> to even you, open up the want, Pro Tools session. But he's gonna yeah, do you, this in like a week or two. <laughs> he doesn't have Netflix, probably. Oh, there you go. That's probably his <laughs> yeah, big deal. Like, they, Damn you, Pete Thorne, not having Netflix. There, there, there's, <laughs> Don't tell him it exists. <laughs> there's, a, there, wow, there's a short of Netflix here in L.A. <laughs> we ran out. I mean, I think that would just be cool. I mean, I would probably just get the black one. He has gold top, a black one, and then he has a new teal one. Get just the teal out. one. I'd probably just get the teal one. Then. The, yeah, don't get the black one. Yeah. Teal stands out. looks cool. It's bitching. And I'm like... I don't know. It has like locking tuners. It has the it, it like you know, it has like all the bells and whistles that you want on a guitar. I'm like, oh shit! Like if you were gonna get a signature guitar, I'd get that. And the thing is, not a lot of people would know that. I'd be like, oh, that's your other thing of playing a signature. People would be like, oh, that's a fucking signature guitar right there. <laughs> what color would you pick? Teal. For you. I, I want. Teal, yeah. I, 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 I said. I, I do that too. I said black, but Kyle said, "Fucking don't do the teal." Yeah. <laughs> do it. Don't I have a lot do of influence over him. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I really Anything like black finish. I like gold tops on Les Pauls. Mm. I th- okay, 
Uh, well, I don't know. I, I say, I say, mm-hmm, if but I really mean. <laughs> if, if you're Mike Ness, mm-hmm. then yeah, they're cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like warming that, up, maybe. But they're so cheesy. All right. Well, but but, I'd uh, still want to play one. Yeah. So <laughs> that that would be for me. And then uh, my second one, just because I've always wanted it, I would do the Tom DeLong E3, <laughs> ES335. That was E33. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna go for the. I'm going to pick that gym room. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, I know dude, you, were like, you wouldn't be able to get like much out of it other than like, you know, Blink-22 type sick. deal. But I'm like, it'd be so sick. Just take the same like him, take spray paint and a flamethrower to it and just do your <laughs> own finish. <laughs> now, you said the 335 style model, right? Uh, it's, I, 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 uh, I misspoke. It's actually the a 333. A 333, yeah. Yeah, where he's got no neck pickup, he's got the dirty fingers in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, ju- it's just yeah. yeah, volume, and just the dirty fingers in the bridge. Right, kind of, kind of like the semi hollow Angels and Airways version of how he had the Strat with like the one output knob exactly. around yeah, ninety nine's yeah. Enema and onward. Yeah, he, like I watched a, a Ernie Ball like documentary thing or whatever on him, and he was talking about like why he like kind of started taking two. You know, uh, hollow bodies that you know the ES three three threes because he's like, oh, you know, once I realized I'm like, I was playing Strat so long because he's a giant dude. I think he's like what six foot three, six foot four, something like that. He's playing he's a got Strat big hands too. Yeah, and so he's like, oh, once I started like realizing I'm a bigger dude, and he's like, I started, you know, once I grew up. Yeah, he's like, oh, like I, I wanted a bigger guitar because I'm like, oh, you know, this kind of fits me a little bit better, and then partially because like of me, I'm like, I'm a lot bigger than I used to be, not. Height wise, but width wise, I'm like, oh, dude, I need a three, three, three. <laughs> that would make uh-huh. me look better on stage. <laughs> so you would you would do your own paint job on that? I don't know. I mean, if I had a legit Tom DeLong pro- Gibson one, probably not. What did they come stock as? That like green, that olive drab? No, it's the uh, brown with the cream racing stripe. Okay, I don't know. That's maybe the standard. He he has several like models, several different like uh, finishes and. In pinstriping stuff, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think that it's like, like brownish color with like a cream yellow yeah. stripe, yeah, which is kind of cool. And the natural headstock, like the yeah, that was cool. It was yeah. fucking like unfinished neck kind of deal. Yeah, it was really cool. My buddy, a, a friend of mine, has a legit Gibson one of those. He paid through the fucking teeth for it, but he's all like super mm-hmm. stoked because he's like, I don't want the Epiphone one because I'm like, the Gibson one's legit, and he finally found one on you know, and bought it. And it's like really fucking cool, but he never plays it because he's like. He's like, well, he doesn't. He's not in a band or anything. He's like, oh, I just have it. I, like, I look at him. Like, the strings are like rusted. I'm like, oh, dude. I'm like, would you ever sell this to me? He's like, no. I'd rather just hang it on my wall than sell it to anybody. <laughs> and I'm like, you fucker. <laughs> it's pretty sweet guitar. I'm like, they play. They play really well, and they look really fucking cool. I mean, mm-hmm. but you could pull one of those off with a different paint job. Because like, yeah. if you played mm-hmm. that on stage, people would be like, dude, this is a this guy loves Tom along. He loves Blink. <laughs> Loves Blink. He's not getting with Blink anymore, dude. He's a NASA now. He's going to space. <laughs> <laughs> He's not coming back. <laughs> Gotta love the skeebs. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be good. I mean, so I, ha- I have one that's like super versatile and really would get a lot of shit done. And then I have one that's bullshit just like because of <laughs> something I always wanted. <laughs> yeah, one for uh, fanboy pleasure and one for the actual answer. Getting work done. Getting Getting shit done here. Well, I think we're going to, like, pull it back here. Um, we're going to do, a, you know, some more shit, and we're going to talk more nitty-gritty on the Patreon. What do you say, Alex? Sounds good to me. All right, uh, so before we head out here, uh, we just want to thank you guys for tuning into the Tone Jerks podcast. And, uh, you know, thank you to Alex from Copper Sound Pedals. Uh, if people want to check you guys out, uh, what's the best way to do it? All the usual media platforms, uh, website, coppersoundpedals.com. Uh, you know, we got Instagram as our main one, Facebook, Twitter, you know, there's some stuff on YouTube, um, and all of those, all those good things. You can also reach out to us, um, and I'm pretty good about responding via Instagram or email. Um, you know, you can reach out to me directly, alex at coppersoundpedals.com, um, and find us on, uh, the media platforms. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great, and Alex is the one who's really on the instagram so you can talk to him you know just comment and like and he's the one who's manning it so i think that's really cool just like you know you're you're the man behind the company and, and uh you're actually the one talking to the people yeah it's 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 part of the gig it's cool though you know i like to 
you know, they took the time to reach out. Let's take the time to get back. You know, we don't have to, I don't have to give them an entire essay <laughs> definitely. about stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know? So, uh, before we head out, uh, we just want to say that if you guys like the show, you guys can uh, leave us a review on iTunes, but if you guys really like the show, you guys can help support us on Patreon. Uh, for as little as $1 a month, and at $2 a month, you double down, you guys get an extra episode every week. Uh, and before we uh, head out, we want to thank the people who have supported us on Patreon. So we're going to give you a, you know, dump a list here real quick. So we have uh, Co and Paul from the Flippin' Flavors podcast. We have Johnny Ray. We have Michael Newman. We have Abe Newman. Doug Gann. Uh, Jamie Davis. Jason Fuzzmonger. We have uh, RJ from Teletalks. We have Like My Pedals. We have Bruce Banana. Jim Bowers. Will A. Hugh, uh, Doug Chris, Andrew Walsh. Uh, we have uh, Fat Foot Effects. And then we have uh, Pelican Noiseworks pedals. And then. Uh, Leon. Leon. Shout yeah. out. And then uh, we have a new one. Yeah. We have uh, Mr. Adam Rohr. Yeah. We've been waiting. We're, Welcome. <laughs> we, we are <laughs> with, with open arms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Adam, he's uh, definitely in a lot of the Facebook groups. He's very active and he's. Uh, yeah, it was recently on uh, Clifton Worley's yeah. uh, show. So check out his episode with Clifton Worley on the Clifton Worley show. And I think that's about it. Did I miss anybody, Kyle? No. I think we're good. So I uh, just want to say thank you guys uh, again. Like, I'm glad anybody's even listening to us. And thank you, Alex from Copper Sound Pedals. Thank you. It's a big deal. I think it's like, you know, that you even took the time to you know come on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. And if you guys want to hear more with Alex... He's going to join us for the Patreon. So check it out. Patreon.com slash the Tone Jerks, probably. <laughs> All right. Bye. I'm just going to fill my... Uh I got a drink going right now. I got uh, what do you, what do you water use? on the rocks <laughs> <laughs> in a mason jar. Uh, water on the rocks. Extra rocks. Extra um, rocks, please. <laughs> so I'm just going to fill that, and um, I'll be good to go. Yeah, we can uh, take a second here if you want to grab some water or whatever. Okay, yeah. Let me, um, let me just grab a refresh at the old water cooler where we do all our <laughs> gossip. <laughs> And, uh, cause, I mean, if we didn't have the water cooler, we wouldn't get anything done. Because I need to know, I need to know two things. When's the next pedal release and who is Jen from Accounting sleeping with? And, uh, where are we good to go?